So refer to the diagram at right. If the measure of angle 1 is 74 degrees and the measure of angle 4 is 3x minus 18 degrees, write an equation and solve for x. So whenever it's the case that I have a pair of parallel lines, and I can quickly emulate that in GeoGebra by just grabbing two points, and I'm going to grab another point that's not off of it, that's not on that point. And if I want to make these line a line that's parallel to it that goes through here, uh, this menu right here has a parallel line tool. And basically what you do is you click the, uh, the line that you want to be parallel to, and then you bring it up to the line that you want it to go through. So at this point, um, these lines, as I, as I move them around, they're, they're always parallel to each other. Now, if you look at the angles over there in one and four, I'm going to simulate that by, uh, I'm going to construct a, a line that's on this and on this. And they're in these locations. If you look closely, they're right, oops. They're right, like here's where the 1 is and here's where the 4 is. And those angles certainly do appear to be um, the same angle. And in fact, they are the same angle. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, these are these are called corresponding angles and they're always congruent. One of the things I can ask GeoGebra to do is measure angles. And you can see I've asked it to measure those angles that are in the position 1 and 2. And you can see they're both currently 56.78 degrees. And as I, as I move you know, these points, um, you know, things change a lot. Those angles are moving all over the place, but they're always in agreement with each other. So anytime that we have corresponding angles, they're going to have the exact same measurement. So because of that, right, I can say that this 74 degrees, right, which is angle one, is the same as this angle, uh, angle four, which is expressed as 3x minus 18. So it's a little artificial, but here's a chance to practice a bit of algebra. I could say 74 is the same as 3x minus 18. I can add 18 to both sides of this equation. Uh, that's 2, 7, 8, 9. I get 92, and that's 3x. Uh, and then if I divide both sides by 3, it's not a nice number, right? I get 92. I'll just write it as 92 thirds. So that's what x is. It's like, uh, I think it's 30 and 2 thirds. Um, but there's our value of x. Um, so let's move on here. Now it says measure angle 1 and measure angle 2. And you can see those are in slightly different locations. Um, um, but it turns out those, those have a name also. Those are called uh, alternate interior angles. And if I look at GeoGebra, um, let me add that angle. Um, I do get the same, right? You can see that the two angles I'm tracking now are, um, actually, let me delete. Well, actually, let's not delete that. I'll just kind of jot on this for a minute. I'm looking at this angle and this angle. And you can see they're both um, 58.6. Um, interestingly, you know, alternate interior angles are congruent. A nice reason why is if we accept the idea that these angles are congruent, right? Notice that these angles are, they're called vertical angles. They're ones that are right across from each other. And anytime that happens, that you have uh, vertical angles, they're always going to be exactly congruent to each other. So again, just like before, I can, uh, that's interesting, I can grab this point as I move it. You can see no matter what, right, this angle equals this angle. So um, same deal, I can, angle one and two are going to uh, have the same measure. So I can set uh, angle one, this time it's the expression 3x minus 9, uh, equal to angle two, which is the expression x plus 25, and then do a little uh, algebra again. So if I'm setting those equal, here's the 3x and the minus 9, and that has to equal x plus 25. If I uh, take away an x from each side, this is 2x minus 9 equals 25, and then I can add 9 to both sides. So 2x is 9 plus 25. Okay, I have a really good authority that that's uh, the number 34 if I add 9 to both sides. And then if I divide both sides by 2, x is 15, 16, 17. So here x is 17. The question did ask me to determine the measurement of angle uh, 2, right? So I need to know how big this angle is. So I'm going to push that 17 into that expression. So uh, the measure of angle 2 would be 3 times this 17 minus 9. And that is, I believe, 42 degrees. So the measure of angle 2 is 42 degrees. 
Okay, so that's it. We had uh, corresponding angles and alternate interior angles.